You're listening to Addressing Gettysburg. Hello, Patreon. Thanks again for being a patron. And today I'm talking to Rich Condon. Rich Condon is, if you're if you're uh, on Instagram, you probably follow Civil War Pittsburgh. If not, I recommend that you do. Um, he has been working on just getting, basically raising awareness and, and any kind of preservation uh, strides that he can make, or strides in preservation, I should say, that he can make um, in Pittsburgh, in the Pittsburgh area for Civil War sites. Um, Rich is an interesting guy. I got to meet him last year, and we sat and had a beer and, and uh, talked a bit. Um, he's a, a public historian based out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, of course, although he began his career as a battlefield guide in Franklin, Tennessee, for nine years, he's worked with a multitude of sites and organizations, including the, back, the, the Battle of Franklin Trust, Soldiers and Sailors Memorial Hall and Museum, and the Harpers Ferry National Historical Park, and Flight 93 National Memorial. Rich is a contributing writer for the Pennsylvania in the Civil War blog and director of Civil War Pittsburgh, an organization focused on education and preservation regarding Western Pennsylvania's role in the American Civil War. Now, what does that have to do with Gettysburg? Well, we're just going to have to wait and find out. But I'll tell you something. I really had a fun time talking to Rich. He is a great guy, great sense of humor. Again, follow him, Civil War Pittsburgh. If you uh, are on Instagram, you're going to love it. Actually, I think he's on Facebook too, but I follow him on Instagram because I can't stand Facebook. But uh, yeah. So it was great, and and I really didn't realize that uh, Pittsburgh and the Civil War was really like that big of a thing. Uh, but of course, it all makes sense once you get to uh, know about it. And uh, I mean, that's the whole point here. Is is you know, like I always say, I'm learning, you're learning. So let's learn together with Rich Condon from Civil War Pittsburgh. We are sitting here today with uh, Rich Condon, who a lot of you may know if you follow, uh, if you're on Instagram or Facebook, you may know him as Civil War Pittsburgh. I know him as Richie because we go way back to, um, I think it was January or February or December I met you last year. I think it, I think it was January or February, yeah. Yeah, so it was a long, long few months ago. Um, Rich, welcome, thank you for doing this. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I know you're exhausted. Yesterday was uh, the Remembrance Day parade. You participated in it and probably some frivolity afterwards, I'm sure, like everybody else. It was it was a long affair. Yeah. 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 And uh, here it is a cold, rainy Sunday in November <clears throat> and we wouldn't have it any other way. Um, Rich, you are, like I said before, you're you're best known for Civil War Pittsburgh. But 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 let's go back. Let's go back. How did how did little Richie get interested in <laughs> the Civil War? Uh, it actually started right here in Gettysburg uh, when I was about twelve years old. Uh, my dad had actually taken me to to Gettysburg on a whim. Um, I remember the uh, the night we decided we were going to come down here. We watched Gettysburg. I saw it for the first time. Uh, you know, back then we watched it on VHS, the mm. double, the, the, mm -hmm. the dual VHS oh, yeah. tapes. Oh yeah. Um, so we watched Gettysburg and uh, then the next morning we drive here and I remember we went to um, Little Round Top and I met a reenactor uh, in a Burdan's sharpshooter uniform and that's kind of when it sparked for me and uh, I'd been obsessed ever since. Now, if it had been just any other uniform, would it have sparked, do you think, or is it uh, something about the Burdan's uniform? I just thought it was so unusual. You know, I, I just watched Gettysburg. I was familiar with... Um, you know, the blue and the gray. Right. That, that was kind of what I had in my head when I was picturing um, a Civil War soldier was, was blue or gray. And then I saw a guy in a green uniform. I'm like, what is this? Did you just think he was the Irish Brigade? No, I wasn't sure what it oh, was. because I've the, heard people say that. The, <laughs> the guy explained it to me, and I thought it was fascinating. And I was like, there's so much more out there to learn. Mm. And then I basically, you know, came back to Pittsburgh and started... Uh, buying up books, looking stuff up online, and just getting totally immersed in it. So then you, I'm assuming, then decided you're going to go to college for history. Is that correct? I actually didn't know what I wanted uh -huh. uh, when I was about that age. I was I started out as a psych major, and oh, then, me too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, nice. It's it's the default major. Yeah. Uh, well, no, but I actually had an interest in psychology. I did too. Yeah. And then and but, then I found out it was a lot of reading. Ex yeah, I wasn't doing very well with that. And then I uh, then I'd actually switched over to um, music therapy. 
because uh, it you know in a former life i was a, a professional musician and uh that's back when uh you know insurance didn't cover that kind of thing so <laughs> um you know so I, I then i switched to history and then i decided to take a short break i moved to tennessee um as a session musician down there and uh that's actually where i got my first public history job i i actually started working for the battle of franklin trust interesting so i worked on franklin battlefield for a few years as a battlefield guide so, so you go, how old are you now? I'm 30 now. I'll You're be, 30? Yeah. See, this is something about your generation that just uh, I, I'm jealous of. Is you guys, are, you pack so much into 20 to 30. <laughs> like, I, I, or maybe we all did. It's just it didn't seem so interesting when I did it. But like you, so you, you were a musician. You moved to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And you, 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 a session musician plays in studios on recordings. Is that what you're talking about? Studios, recordings, and uh, like also live do gigs. tours. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you're a gun for hire, basically. Yeah, yeah pretty means. much. All right, and then so how did you jump from that to Franklin? Um. Well, so I've I've played music and I've been interested in history. The same. I, I started playing music when I was 12. Okay. Same exact time when I got into history. So it's always been kind of these two parallels. Fighting you know, for you. Yeah, <laughs> fighting for me since that age. And, um, you know, the Franklin job, I uh, I basically kind of reached out of the blue and emailed the director. Okay. And, you know, I heard back a uh, short, short while later. And then I, you know, they asked, you know, what can you start? And are you comfortable with talking to uh, groups of 20 or more? And at the time, I'd never really done any public speaking. Uh -huh. And that sounded terrifying to me. And uh, I just said, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> and I, I kind of just threw myself into it and it just worked out and I've been doing it ever since. So then you, how long are you there for in Franklin? Uh, I think it was 2012 to 2015, 16, somewhere around there. And then you moved back to Pittsburgh? Moved back to Pittsburgh and um, I, uh, then I, I stayed there for a little bit and then I moved to Frederick, Maryland. Um, I was do, uh, finishing up some schooling at Shepherd University in okay. Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Sure. And Makes then I sense. moved back to Pittsburgh um, in uh, April of 2018. Okay. Oh, so just recently? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then you start Civil War Pittsburgh. Yeah, I started uh, Civil War Pittsburgh in the first week of December of 2018 so we're almost a year old and uh what 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 was the goal of uh starting civil war pittsburgh was it uh well and you tell me what was the goal of it so uh you know um my full-time job is a i'm a seasonal ranger insert ranger at flight 93 national memorial hmm. um, so i'm off from around you know late october to mid-april um so Civil War Pittsburgh really was something for me to, to occupy my time. It's something I've always wanted to do. Um, you know, basically what sparked Civil War Pittsburgh was, you know, one of my friends is in town. Uh, actually, he's a Western Pennsylvania native. Um, he was in town uh, around October, November of last year. And um, they had the, um, the Civil War Historians Conference in, uh, in Pittsburgh, downtown Pittsburgh. And we went out for drinks one night and you know, he said, this is great, like, you know, I, lo I love this conference, but why would they have it here in Pittsburgh if they're not gonna do any kind of civil war tour of Pittsburgh? What's the point in having it here or hosting it here? Hmm. You know, you might as well have it in Vegas at that point. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I was like, yeah, there, there should be a, a civil war tour, an organized civil war tour of, of Pittsburgh or Western Pennsylvania. And uh, I kind of let that marinate for a bit. And then in the first week of December, when I'm in my off season, uh, it started off with social media. So I used kind of Facebook and Instagram as a launching pad for Civil War Pittsburgh. Hmm. And it's kind of grown out of that ever since. And a lot of people listening uh, who are maybe new to the whole study of the Civil War, or the Gettysburg campaign might be thinking to themselves, well, what the hell does this have to do with Gettysburg? <laughs> what, what does Pittsburgh have to do with, or even the Civil War? Did they, was there a battle there? What, what's, what the dilly? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, early on, you know, Pittsburgh, uh, Pittsburgh had Allegheny Arsenal, uh -huh. um, which was a mass producer of ammunition. Okay. Um, 
for the, the Federal Army. Uh, you also had Fort Pitt Foundry, <coughs> which is um, the, the modern strip district in Pittsburgh, right outside of the city. The modern what? Strip district. <laughs> it, the strip district is basically like a, a string of shops and oh, things strip like malls. that. Oh, strip Kind of. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, what do you mean kind of? Uh, so it's it's a lot of kind of mom and pop stores. Yeah. Uh, but in this, like little this strips, one right? concentrated area. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, a lot of people go Glad on. Glad you on, clarified that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on, uh, you know, Saturday mornings or Sunday mornings, people will go out to the strip district and, you know, go to like the, the fish market, things like that. Okay. So, um, anyway, that's where the, the Fort Pitt Foundry used to be. You would never even know it was there now. Uh, there's literally nothing left of it. Um, but you know that's they were actually producing guns there. Um, so it was it was uh, in the beginning at least supporting the war effort for the yeah, I mean, uh, part of supporting. They were uh, high functioning before the Civil War. For example, Allegheny Arsenal I think employed somewhere around seven eight hundred people okay. um, before the Civil War. And um, but obviously it's going to be ramped up when the war comes. They, they bumped yeah. their their employment up to about twelve hundred people okay. after that, and it's like a. Th roughly 35 acre plot of land that you have this arsenal sitting on. It's right on the Allegheny River, so you can easily ship, uh, you know, ship stuff on, on um, it goes to the Ohio. You know, Pittsburgh is the, the confluence of the Allegheny and Monongahela Rivers uh, into the Ohio. So that's where it starts. Um, that's a, that plays a key role into, uh, you know, Pittsburgh's importance in the Civil War is considered a gateway to the West. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have Allegheny Arsenal, you have Fort Pitt Foundry, and you have the city that's surrounded by hills mm -hmm. and, and mountains. Mm -hmm. It basically sits in like a bowl. Um, this is, you know, this is why uh, the the British and the French see it as such a key point around the time of the French and Indian War. You know, that's why they, feel, they built Fort Duquesne and Fort Pitt there okay. um, originally. So anyway, um, in 1861, a team of U.S. Army engineers are going to visit the city of Pittsburgh and deem it one of the most defendable points in all of the Union. Um, when they're looking at this terrain and this city just sitting in the middle, <coughs> you know, they're, they're basically saying if you were to build forts around this city, it'd be very defendable. Mm -hmm. And that, that. As long as you can hold those forts. As long as you can hold those forts, <laughs> right. very defendable. Uh, and that's why this, um, you know, we're talking about the Civil War fortifications of Pittsburgh that are built in June of 1863. Um, that's that comes into play, you know, just under two years after those those engineers had visited. Now, when we um, were first starting to talk about this before we officially started the the episode, um, you were saying that um, the there was a panic when mm -hmm. uh, the Confederates invaded. Uh, Pennsylvania during the Gettysburg campaign, but that wasn't the first panic that they had out in Pittsburgh. Yeah. And why? What? What? What was this? So from the beginning, they were. I guess it was kind of a lot like how people were in Gettysburg for the same reasons. It was cl close proximity to to the border. Yeah. yeah. So you know, today if you were to drive from downtown Pittsburgh to the West Virginia border, it might take you forty five minutes or so. Yeah. Um, that's that's a roughly a, you know one day or so march for uh, an army. And West Virginia at that West point Virginia at that was point didn't exist. Virginia. You know? Yeah, it was yeah. Virginia. So P P Pittsburgh in Western Pennsylvania is bordering enemy territory um, up until June twentieth, sixty three, which is right smack dab in the middle of the panic. Right, and and, and June twentieth is when they start to build these fortifications. Actually, the, the fortifications are being constructed as early as around June fourteenth. So, uh, so so they they get wind that the Confederate army is on the move. They're, they're catching wind that the Confederate army is in the move. They, they, uh, they just sacked Winchester. Yeah, they're they're hearing rumors that the Confederate army is moving swiftly through Cumberland, Maryland, and kind of moving up into Western Pennsylvania. Uh huh. Um, so there there is false reports, you know, coming left and right, but people really didn't know what to believe. Right, right, right. Um, you know, if you look at uh, you know, I mentioned earlier um, before we started the podcast, other places like Central Pennsylvania, Altoona, or uh, out near Philly, they're constructing fortifications out there as well. Right. So um, nobody knows. They don't know where he's headed, but they thought that Pittsburgh, you know, having Allegheny Arsenal and Fort Pitt Foundry, um, you know, these these military powerhouses in the city, uh, that the Confederates would want to invade a city and, and take over those um, those institutions. Right. But also, 
like I said before, that's also a gateway to the West. You could you could kind of cut the North in half if you were to take a city like Pittsburgh. Mm. Um, so uh, June 14th, like I said, is when they're going to start constructing these fortifications. Want to hear the rest of this episode and more like it? Then go to patreon.com slash addressing Gettysburg. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash addressing Gettysburg and become a patron today.